Even before Russia launched its attack on Ukraine, much of Europe was already enduring rising energy costs. A move away from nuclear power and commitments to lower carbon emissions left Europe with few options. But now, Turkey could be a potential source for the EU's green energy needs. That's how one of Europe's top environmental officials, Franz Timmermans, described Turkey's potential role in being a vital source for energy exports. Timmermans made the remarks in Ankara during the latest round of climate talks between the EU and Turkey. Over the past several years, the country has been expanding its solar and wind power capacity. But it's Turkey's potential to be a source for green hydrogen that has EU officials most excited. Experts stress that hydrogen produced from clean energy sources will be key to replacing fossil fuels. So can Turkey and the European Union, despite all their political differences, come together to work on green energy? And now for more on Turkey's potential energy cooperation with the EU, joining us from London is Jonathan David Lamp. He is an energy analyst at Wood Company. And from Ankara, Eser Özdil. He is the founder of Global Group Consulting Investment and Trade, a business and consultancy firm. Gentlemen, welcome to Straight Talk. It's good to have you on the program. So, Eser, the European Union says it is hopeful that Turkey could play an important role for the bloc's drive to diversify its energy sources. What kind of a role could Turkey play in here? What does it offer? Well, hello, Aisha. Thank you very much for the invitation. Actually, the cooperation opportunity between the EU and Turkey is a very broad issue. So we should need to divide some sections. For example, we need to talk about the natural gas, we need to talk about the electricity, we need to talk about the renewable energy technologies, we need to talk about the hydrogen uh, cooperation between the between two uh, between two groups. The first, if we start with the natural gas, definitely the primary issue for EU right now diversification especially after the aggression between uh, Russia and Ukraine. Mostly uh, Southeastern European countries or Eastern European countries are desperately looking for alternative sources to diversify their gas imports. Yes. So in this perspective, the Turkey's uh, gas infrastructure uh, remains as, as the very valuable option, uh, especially for the LNG diversification, because Turkey has the largest LNG gas capacity in the region, uh, and there is no other countries having that much capacity. For electricity, the Turkey's installed capacity uh, reached 100 gigawatt, and actually more renewable energy uh, deployment will be online in the years to come. Uh, that's why actually Turkey can also export to uh, Balkan and Southeastern European countries via interconnections between Greece and Turkey, but I believe that the current interconnection capacity should be further increased. Yes. The third, the yes. renewable energy technology, and of course the renewable energy technology is also valuable, but hydrogen is another uh, option in the years to come. So, um, Jonathan, where does energy cooperation between Turkey and the European Union uh, currently stand? I mean, do they have the necessary political will to enhance cooperation uh, on energy? Um, I think uh, if we start off with, with natural gas, we can see that there's been a building up of uh, connections between Turkey and um, countries in the European Union, in, in Europe. Mm -hmm. um, the, of course, the TANAP TAP pipeline was a very big uh, example of that, um, came on stream at the beginning of 2021, and it is now supplying quite a lot, a lot of gas through Greece to, um, to Italy. And we have new interconnectors being built between Greece and Bulgaria, which can take some of that gas up. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, um, when the, the gas in the Black Sea comes on stream, um, Turkey will have some of its own, own gas. So it, it either can export some of that or um, keeps its own gas and exports some, of, some more of the gas that's coming through from um, other countries. Mm -hmm. um, in, terms of, in terms of electricity, I think one of the biggest problems that we have in Europe is that we don't have nearly enough interconnectivity between the markets. And this is an area where there, there is um, growing demand to improve this situation. Because when you have renewables, for example, if you had um, a really sunny day in, in, in the south of Turkey, um, and it's, you're producing a lot of solar pa power, but there isn't wind up in Northern Europe, if you could ship that electricity up into the center and north of Europe where they needed it, 
um, that would that would enhance everybody's energy security. Yes. Um, so I think these things are very important. Yeah, I understand power generated by renewables and hydrogen will be very essential for this transition. You've just mentioned Bulgaria uh, and um, Greece, but could this electrical grid um, be expanded beyond those two countries? And what kind of a role could Turkey play in here? Um, in order to, to send electricity a, a, a further distance, you have to have special um, high voltage DC um, connectors. There's, they're, they're building them between various European countries. For example, there's a new one being built between Germany and, and the UK, which is called New Connect. Um, so in order to, for Turkey to be able to export large quantities of, of electricity into Europe, into places other than just the next door neighbors, um, I think that would need a, a big investment in these kind of special um, high voltage power lines. Yes. Yeah. So, as I, the European Union has integrated energy and climate policy packages for 2030 and is implementing the European Green Deal uh, to uh, reach carbon neutrality by 2050. How can Turkey catch up with this uh, legislation? What are the challenges ahead? Well, actually, this is a big discussion in EU as well uh, because of the high energy prices that we have observing in the markets right now. Um, for the Turkish uh, perspective, uh, also our Minister of uh, Climate Change and Envi Climate Change and Urbanization adopted a new strategy to catch up the uh, Green Deal of the EU. Mm -hmm. For the Turkey, I think uh, the first and most primary thing that will be to have more renewable energy generation capacity. Uh, even though in the current situation we are not that bad in consideration to other EU countries, for example. Last year we generated 35% of our electricity need from renewables and just a year before it was more than 45%. But the target of the Turkish government is very ambitious and every uh, year we want to uh, deploy more than uh, three, four gigawatts uh, renewable energy capacity. So I think the first thing is going to be that we will have more renewable energy capacity. Mm -hmm. The second one, Turkey is an exporting country and our exports mostly uh, go to EU countries. So of, as of 2026, uh, all of the exporters in Turkey will subject to a carbon border adjustment mechanism or yes. literally say carbon tax. So this is going to have a serious impact on our industrial players. So all of the industrial players, especially energy intensive ones like uh, iron and steel, like ceramic, like automotive industry, they have to change their current production uh, perspective and they need to lower their carbon emissions. Yes. So the hydrogen in this regard will play a very uh, key role in uh -huh. this energy transition. And this is going to be the, the primary target of Turkish government to ensure energy transition. So Jonathan, on the Green Deal, how much can Europe help Turkey when it comes to uh, financing? And how can uh, the EU's carbon border adjustment mechanism affect Turkish exporters, as Esar just mentioned? Um, well, it's uh, without the carbon border tariff, um, it's becoming ever more difficult to further decarbonize European industry and, and Europe uh, in general. Mm -hmm. And so um, in order to make sure that European companies are, com are competing on a, a, a level playing field with countries like Turkey, um, that mechanism is necessary to, to be put in place. I'm, I think that I'm not sure whether there's any money directly available from the new Green Deal um, to countries outside of the EU, I'm not familiar with that detail. Okay. Um, but if you know, if to, if, if there are um, profitable ways of investing in, in decarbonisation that will help maintain competitiveness, I don't think it will be a problem to um, to actually uh, mm -hmm. finance it. So, in that case, as I can, a Green Deal help save the EU's relationship with Turkey. I mean, could strong cooperation on energy help improve? the both sides relations moving forward well i think both sides i think both sides are aware that uh, cooperation should be further uh, expanded and as you may remember that just uh, last week if i'm not mistaken the timmermans was in ankara especially to take all of this 
uh, issues and discuss with the counterparties in the country. So it is clear that EU is also paying high attention to cooperate with Turkey. I believe that if another chapter is uh, open to negotiation, this can also further contribute to political willingness between the between between EU and Turkey. But from my understanding, that the Turkey's green hydrogen potential is quite high. Yes. And Turkey's also blue hydrogen potential is quite high. And from this perspective, in the short term, we can, uh, well, in the short term, EU and Turkey can exchange technology, especially. But in the mid to long term, uh, with this technology exchange and funding of the research, the trade on hydrogen and other green transition fields can be more realized. Yes, all right, gentlemen, unfortunately, we are out of time. Thank you very much for joining me on Straight Talk.